Buongiorno e benvenuto in Big Friendly Grub. Yes, hello and welcome to Big Friendly Grub again. And apologies for any Italians watching or anyone of Italian origin watching for my butchering of the beautiful Italian language there. But the reason I'm introducing this video in Italian is because we seem to be sticking to a theme at the moment. You might recall that my last couple of videos are of Italian recipes. Number one being biscotti and number two being Focaccia, almost forgot what it was there. And this third video is also of Italian descent, so we have inadvertently done ourselves an Italian trilogy. Kind of like our biscuit trilogy, really. So, looks like I'm fond of trilogies at the moment. Kind of appropriate, really, that I'm wearing my Star Wars t shirt today because uh, that has a few trilogies going on it now. Some better than others, but let's not get into that right now. But I really like The Last Jedi. Don't at me. But yes, you're probably wondering what it is I'm going to be making for you today. And today it is going to be no baking. We are going to be cooking panna cotta. And if you don't know what panna cotta is, panna cotta literally means cooked cream. Panna cotta is a wonderful Italian dessert. It's actually quite quick to do. It's actually quite simple. It has very few ingredients. The most time comes from waiting for it to set and having the patience to be able to let it set and not eat it straight away. So I'm going to show you how to make that today. It's a wonderful dessert. And one of the brilliant things about panna cotta is you can flavor it how you want. You can flavor it with vanilla. You can use vanilla extract, vanilla pods. You can use rum. You can use whiskey if you wanted to. You could use anything really. But what I am going to use today, I'm going to make an espresso panna cotta. So I'll be putting a shot of espresso into the panna cotta simply because that's my preference. I love espresso panna cotta. I love coffee and in panna cotta is absolutely mind blowing. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. But if you don't want espresso, don't use it. Substitute it for something else. It's entirely up to you. But enough of my talking. Come and follow me and I will show you how to make panna cotta. So let's do a quick rundown of our ingredients. Like I said, panna cotta is very, very simple. It doesn't need many ingredients at all. So I'm gonna quickly run those down for you. First and foremost, we need double cream, 250 milliliters of double cream. Otherwise it wouldn't be panna cotta because like I said, it's cooked cream. Make sure it's double cream as well, not single cream, double cream. Then we also need 50 milliliters of milk, preferably whole milk, but I don't buy whole milk and I didn't wanna buy it just for 50 milliliters of um, milk. So I'm just using semi-skimmed instead, which I keep in plentiful supply. Then we're going to want 50 grams of caster sugar. Good job I didn't drop that. That would have been a mess everywhere. I like to chuck in a little vanilla extract, but not loads, because our predominant flavor in this one is coffee. And speaking of coffee, I have already prepared 50 milliliters of espresso here. So if you've got the espresso machine handy, all the better. Otherwise you can use instant. I would probably suggest getting some decent stuff like the Azure, like instant coffee, rather than using like Nescafe. I would probably suggest um, getting hold of like, you know, the powdered instant coffee rather than the granules, because that'll probably work better. But as long as you've got coffee and you've got like a double shot of it, it'll work fine. But the better the coffee, the better the flavor. Last but not least, you're gonna need two sheets of gelatin because this is gonna help our panna cotta set. We're gonna soak this in cold water for a little bit before putting it into our mixture. Warning though, if you use this kind of gelatin, it will mean that the panna cotta are not vegetarian because if you didn't know, gelatin is actually like the jelly from the bones of animals, cooked off from the bones of animals. So if you're a vegetarian or vegan, don't use this stuff. You can get a hold of vegetarian um, gelatin as well, or agar agar, which is also a good substitute as well. So use that instead. I'm just making these for myself and will give them to people who I know aren't vegetarian or vegan. So it's fine in this case, but that's just a disclaimer there. So two sheets of that soaked in cold water, which I'm gonna do now off camera. Movie magic. So to cook our panna cotta, we're gonna need a large pan with a heavy base over a medium heat to start with. And we're gonna just pop in our cream here. Also pop in our milk as well. Then we're gonna add in our 50 grams of sugar, which I've just weighed out into this bowl here. Not only is the sugar gonna help sweeten our cream and milk, it's also gonna help stop the uh, cream from bubbling and boiling over. So the idea is we're just gonna want to uh, bring this up to the boil. And as soon as it comes up to the boil, we'll move it off the heat. So I've got it on a medium heat at the moment, but I'm just gonna bring it up to like a medium high, just to try and help us get us up to the boil quicker. Um, I realized while I was talking about the ingredients earlier that I said it wouldn't make it vegetarian or vegan, which is half true. 
because it's already not vegan, even if you don't add in the gelatin because of the uh, milk and the cream. So disregard half of what I said back there. I'm not sure how you go about making a vegan one. Obviously you can get soy creams and things like that, but they're more of the consistency of single cream and I don't know if that would work. But if you had managed to make vegan panna cotta, let me know, I'd be eager to try it. I've got a couple of vegans that work who would also be eager to try it. So I'm going to keep stirring this to stop like the milk from burning and just wait for this to come up to the boil. This isn't a very exciting process, so I'm just going to speed this up through some movie magic. Right, you can see this has come up to the boil now, so I am going to turn off this heat and move this swiftly over. So you don't want it to come up out any more than that. It's literally as soon as it hits the boil, go move the uh, camera over here so we can see. Literally as soon as it comes to the boil, move it off that heat. Now I am going to pop in our gelatin while it's still very hot. You can see it's been put into cold water and it's softened up. I'm just going to squeeze out the excess water and I'm going to just pop that in there and just whisk this in. Adjust this camera. So I'm just going to whisk in the gelatin until it dissolves. It shouldn't take very long because this cream is still very hot so it should dissolve very very quickly. Now that's dissolved I'm just going to literally put in a splash a vanilla extract. If you're making a vanilla one you can put in more of that, maybe like a tablespoon. But I am making an espresso one so I'm going to pop in my espresso now. And whisk that in as well so you can see that has changed to a lovely dark coffee colour. You could drink that to be fair if it didn't have the gelatin in it. Smells very, very, very good indeed. Now I'm going to move that to one side quickly. And what we're going to want is, we're going to need some moulds to put this in. So I've got these kind of like pudding dishes here. These are probably a good size. Not sure how many I'm going to get out of these, but I'm going to put down two to start with. And just going to ever, ever so, ever so carefully pour this into our moulds. So I managed to get two quite large moulds out of that one. These are quite big, but obviously if you want more of these, then you can either use smaller moulds or you can increase the recipe, just double everything, treble everything. Depends on how many you want, but I don't want to make too many of these anyway, because they're kind of just a treat for me. I've been trying to lose weight recently and I've been doing quite well. So this is just kind of a treat for myself later today. I'm not going to eat both obviously, but I'll save one for another day. And now all we need to do with these is these need to go into the fridge. Ideally overnight, but I'm doing this fairly early in the day, so I'm going to give these probably a good six hours or so to cool down. These are going to go into the fridge and we will come back later and see how they set. Hopefully very, very well. So I will see you then. Hello. Thought I'd try a different angle. So it's been about seven, eight hours since I made the panna cotta and it's had all that time to chill. I've been really, really busy in between now and then. I've made like 48 cupcakes for work, which is top secret because it's actually Rocket Mill's 10th birthday tomorrow. But because this will be going up after that and I'm actually filming this before that happens and it's kind of a secret, but by the time I put this up, it would have happened. So it doesn't matter if I tell you about it. Oh, I'm confused. Anyway, I've been really busy. I've made like 48 cupcakes today and also filmed another video as well as this one. And I've done a lot, let's put it that way. So the pan cost has had loads and loads of time to chill, but now all I've got left to do is taste it. And I have to admit, I've been a bit distracted as well because Elton John is playing his farewell gig like two roads over. So I've kind of been listening to that instead of filming the video. He's literally like, two roads away from where I live and it's so clear I can hear everything. I've had to shut my windows because you can hear everything and I'd probably get a copyright infringement if I actually filmed with my windows open right now. So I've actually had these chilling a lot longer than I thought but it is now the time to check one of them out. So follow me. 
Right, I have my plate out all ready to put my panna cotta on. And what I'm going to do, and I've actually had this sat in warm water for a couple of minutes just so to loosen the panna cotta from the um, container, pudding tin, whatever it's called. I've forgotten what it's called. Doesn't matter. Let's see if we can get this baby out. So I'm going to pop that on top, turn it upside down, give it a bit of a wobble, and hopefully, hopefully the moment of truth. Oh baby, there we go. One awesome looking espresso panna cotta. Check that out. Let's get in there. Oh, look how shiny and glossy that is. That is looking fantastic. I'm well happy with that. So what I'm going to do is quickly take a photo of this before it gets all funky and decides to perhaps collapse. I don't know. And then I'm going to eat it, basically. Yeah, I'm going to eat that sucker. So I will be back very shortly so you can watch me eat it. You guys are so lucky. Right, I've just popped a little bit of cream onto my panna cotta because apparently this needs more cream. I decreed it need more cream. So I'm going to back up into the shop and let you watch me eat it, you lucky, lucky people. So let's give this a go. Espresso panna cotta. Oh, it's got really good texture. Set really well. It's got a nice wobble on it. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, that is so good. That is just the right hit of coffee. It is like melt in your mouth, creamy, as you would expect. It's mostly cream. And that is just fantastically good. That is really, really so good. I'm gonna zoom back in. So you can see how smooth and well set that is. That is absolutely perfect. And it is absolutely delicious. And it is so, so very, very, very simple to do. It takes probably about 10 minutes in total to do. It's just the time that you wait for it to set. But by God, is it worth the wait? That is so good. Hold on, I'm just gonna have another bit. <laughs> the moment you put a spoonful in your mouth, you just get the coffee straight away. It is such a wonderful texture. It's so decadent. You can tell it's naughty, but it's a treat. It really is. I tell you what, after the day I've had and how busy I've been, that's absolutely bang on. I love that. So that's it from me today. I'm going to take this. I'm going to swing my windows open and listen to a bit more Elton and finish this off. I'll see you on the next Big Friendly Grub. Bye, guys. Take care.